Good morning, everybody. This is Carl Brown, your, your host. And um, today we're going to be talking with Mr. Rod Johnson from the SBA. And you're more than well aware of this guy. He's been on, this is about our fourth or fifth time that we come together to, to bring you good news about how to get money. So this, this uh, workshop webinar right now is coping with COVID-19 financial tools and resources to help small businesses. And without further ado, I got my buddy Rod Johnson from the SBA on. Rod, take it over. All right, good morning, everyone. It's a great day today. It's Friday, the weather's beautiful, and the streets of DC are paved with greenbacks from PPP and IDLE. Well, this morning, we're gonna cover a few topics. Of course, we're gonna talk about PPP, we're gonna talk about IDLE, but you know what? There are also, during this pandemic, there are businesses that are actually expanding. So what I wanna do is start us off with some of the products that the SBA offers to companies that you apply to through your bank. Next slide, please. And so, the SBA, while, so the SBA has many, many programs to help you sustain and to grow your business. So we're gonna talk about SBA-backed loan products, the process, because I think it's important because unfortunately what I've been finding during this pandemic is that people really don't understand the loan process to get an SBA loan. Then we're gonna talk about deferrals to augment your cash flow the Debt Relief Act that still doesn't get a lot of love in the media, which I don't know why, but we're gonna talk about that. They help augment your cash flow. Well, I, I think part of the reason why it doesn't get any love, Rod, is because people don't know, and that's why we got you doing this today. Okay. To educate the folks out here because they need to know about all of the tools that you have listed on the slide here. All right, and then of course, everybody's heard about PPP, then the IDLE program, which was actually the original loan program that was rolled out to help businesses. And then it, there's a ruling that's come out that I'll explain a little later about how to use the PPP in conjunction with IDLE. And then the program that was resurrected from the dead, the SBA Express Bridge Loan Program, application support, and then the mentoring and coaching support of course, that you'll receive from Carl and his team. Absolutely. Next slide, please. All right, so here are the main loans programs that the SBA actually offers. The 7A loan program that goes up to $5 million, okay? Now, with the 7A loan program, you can actually use it for commercial real estate or you can use it um, to expand your business, hire new employees use it for marketing, use it for business development. Then you have the SBA Express that goes up to 350,000, where you can use it as a term loan or a line of credit. Then you have the SBA Veteran Advantage, which is pretty similar to the SBA Express that goes up to 350,000. And with the SBA Express and Veterans Advantage, you get the bank will receive a 50% guarantee. With the 7A loans, the bank receives an 80% guarantee. Then for you government contractors and construction contractors out there, we have what we call the cap line program. Um, again, specifically for construction companies and government contractors, the banks receive actually an 80% guarantee for doing this loan from the SBA, and it goes up to $5 million. Then you have the community advantage. That program actually goes up to 250,000. Typically there are organizations like the Latino Economic Development Corp, and you don't have to be a Latino to take advantage of it, or the Washington Area Community Investment Fund, which is on Rhode Island Avenue, about 22nd Rhode Island Avenue Northeast. They're the ones that distribute the community advantage loans. And then our group, the International Trade Export Working Capital and Export Express, so for any of you that are doing business overseas, this is a good program because the SBA grants anywhere from a 50% to 90% in 
guarantee for the banks to use this program. And look, the export or international trade doesn't even need to be a major part of your business. Even if a half percent of your revenues are derived from exporting or doing international trade, then you can apply for this program through your bank. And then you have the 504 loan program. This is primarily used for to finance, again, real estate and equipment. The only difference is, is that the bank is limiting its exposure to 50%. The CDC, Community Development Corporation, takes on 40%, <clears throat> excuse me, and then you as the business owner put down 10%. Next slide, please. So oh, now- wait, how, much, how much does that go up to? <laughs> excuse me. Um, depending $5.5 .5 million. Okay. Which $5.5 million is enough damage that, you know, that people can have doing, the, doing that loan. Okay. Or receiving that loan. Right. All right. So, so how do you get these loans? All right. So you, you have to apply to a lender. And so here's the process. The lender approves the loan subject to the SBA guarantee. The lender submits the request to the SBA. We approve the lender's request, and then the lender settles and services the loan. Now, here's the thing. What you wanna look for is a preferred lender. A preferred lender actually approves, they put your loan in the system, they actually approve the loan through their loan committees or whatever their approval process is, and then within typically 24 hours, the SBA says, we are in agreement, and typically, depending on the type of loan, you can get this sucker closed within a couple of weeks. If it's a real estate loan, you're probably going to take about 60 days because you have to order an appraisal and get an environmental done. But for your regular line of credit, you can actually close this thing within a couple of weeks. It's When you're working with a preferred lender, it can be a very quick process. Next slide, please. And so this is what's what time are you doing here? No. Was there a comment? No. Nah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here's what you take to your lender. And this is important. So if you're a startup, of course you're going to take your business plan. If you're a company that's been around a while, then as part of your package, you're going to include an executive summary of why you need the money. All right, then we need the resumes of your key management team. Then of course, the business financials. If you've been in business for three years or more, the last three years of your financials plus the interim financial statements. So right now, the bank would be looking for your 2017, 18 and 19 business tax returns or financials and your interim, year to date interim, May 31st, 2020 balance sheet and income statement, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and if you're a government contractor, contract backlog report. This next one, the use of proceeds. You should be doing a T-chart showing how you're going to use the proceeds. So on one side, you're gonna have the, in how cash is coming in, and then the use of the cash, okay? So that's what they mean by the use of proceeds. Then you're gonna have cash flow projections. And actually Carl and his team can help you with that. That's right. Then you have the legal documents, the articles, the bylaws, your certificate of good standing, or the, or, or the um, documents that govern your LLC. All right, so make sure you have your legal documents. Then you have a personal financial statement and personal tax returns. Personal tax returns, 2017, 18, and 19. Your personal financial statement should be dated as of 531, 2020. And then proof of your investment, okay? Particularly if you're a startup. So we need to see the bank statements where the money's coming from for your 10% down payment or 20% down payment into the deal. We need to see the bank statement to, show, to see where the money's coming from. So this is what you need to take to your lender. If you don't have that stuff ready, don't go to your lender and waste his or her time. Make sure you have all this information, okay? 
And, they, right. and, and Rod, I can impress how important that is. Because a lot of people say, well, they, they denied me the loan. But yeah, your package was incomplete. They can't make a decision on an incomplete package. That's correct. All right. So the borrower requirements. Notice, well, I'm going to take it for granted that you're going to have a feasible business plan because you're working with Carl's team. Now, you need to have good character. And people always ask me, well, what the heck does that mean? How do you judge character? Okay. <laughs> well, the way that you judge good character is through the FICO score. That's the good character that bankers understand. Okay. Now, the SBA says that your FICO score cannot be below 650. Most banks like to see 700 and above. And just so you know, nowadays, you know, people, bankers don't even get excited if you have a 700 score. Okay. From 675 to 700, now is like, a, huh? okay, everybody should have that. So I just want to let you know that. Now, over 730, then the bankers really start getting excited. But from 675 to 700, is like, huh? okay. So I just want to let you know that, but that's how your character is being judged. And keep in mind, the, the bankers are getting down into the weeds because they're looking at where you shop. Are you shopping at Nordstrom's, Saks Fifth Avenue, the Macy's, you know, and Garfinkel's and, you know, Nordstrom's and all those type of stores, okay? Because it does say something about you. Do you have on your credit report a $104,000 automobile driving you know the lexus ls 500 okay do you have the 35 foot boat yacht on your credit report and you think i'm exaggerating but no i'm not because there are businesses out there or people out there that have these things and the business is barely four years old so anyway your credit report is how your character is being judged do you have management expertise okay so you can't do like me and roll out of bed this morning and say that I am going to go ahead and buy a Starbucks franchise. I've been a financier for over 30 years. I know nothing about serving coffee. So, you know, if I went to a bank and said, I want to go, you know, start a Starbucks or become a barista, they look at me like I'm nuts. So management expertise is important. Do you have a commitment to succeed? Are you organized, structured? discipline can you persevere are you mentally tough those are the characteristics that you know we're, we're looking for and it will come out in your conversation do you have adequate working capital all right do you have cash basically is what that's saying adequate working capital to keep the business going do you have an ability to repay do you does your business generate cash flow okay Banks are not collateral lenders. Oh, I have a house with a lot of equity. I have marketable securities. No, those things are good, but we're looking for cash flow. And then you must be a citizen or a legal resident. Okay. All right, next slide, please. So now, here's one of the things that are important, and that is you cannot have any outstanding judgments, liens, or open bankruptcies. I don't know how many times I've sat across the desk and I've asked people, do they have any open bankruptcies? And they tell me no, or do they have any liens? Like if you're a construction contractor and they have mechanic liens all up and down the project, okay? I'm gonna find out. So just tell me up front, okay? Now, again, no outstanding judgments, liens, or open bankruptcies no previous loss to the government. So if you've had an SBA loan and we've written that sucker off, or you've had a student loan and it had to be written off, you're not getting another government loan, okay? So I just wanna let you know that. Now, understand what your size standards are. And the way you do that is go to sba.gov. Now I know there was a lot of brouhaha around Ruth Chris and Shake Shack and all these other people getting PPP money, but guess what? Based on their NAICS codes, right? They met the size standards according to the SBA. 
A lot of people didn't realize that, okay? Now, whether or not they should have received the funds, you know, is a different story, but they did meet the SBA size standard. So it's important to know, you know, that you, what your company's size standard is per your NAICS code, all right? Then you got to make sure you're putting your personal equity into the business. No bank is going to give you 100% financing. And let's make sure it's a legal business and an SBA approved industry. So the guys that have been coming to me for PPP, where 100% of their money is derived from gambling at, you know, Live and MGM Grand and Horseshoe and Delaware Park and, you know, the casino up in Dover, which I'm forgetting the name of right now. Um, yes, they file a 1040 with the Schedule C, but it's not an approved industry. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to let you guys know that who are professional gamblers. All right. Next slide, please. All right. So activities not eligible for SBA loans. I get this one a lot. Investment property. No. Investment properties and apartment buildings are not eligible. It has to be an owner-occupied facility. It can even be a mixed-use facility but 51% of the space must be occupied by the business, okay? So that's important. Lending institutions are not eligible for SBA loans. I've talked about gambling, but you know what? I missed, I didn't talk about adult entertainment. No, adult entertainment shops are not eligible for SBA loans or the multi-level marketing schemes like Amway, and some of the other ones that are out there, they're not eligible. Now, generally nonprofit organizations are not eligible for SBA loans, but for the purposes of the PPP program, they are eligible. And then those activities that discriminate or restrict patronage, you know, like some of the country clubs where they were men only or women only or, um, uh, there's some other uh, type organizations that were restrictive in their patronage um, based on ethnicity and race. Uh, well, they're not eligible. And then transportation vehicles for personal use. Okay. So they're all not eligible for SBA loans. Next slide, please. So here's the fun part. Here are ways to augment your cash flow. So if you have an existing or non-existing SBA loan, you can ask for a deferment up to six months. So if you currently have a 7A, 504, or microloan, you go to your bank and tell them that you want six months deferral on those loans. If you have an existing disaster loan, you can ask for a deferment up through December 31st, 2020. So in other words, if you were involved in a hurricane, a fire, um, flooding, or whatever ever disaster there has been declared out there, then you can actually ask for a deferment on those loans. You can also go to your bank if you have a line of credit or term loan and ask for a deferment on those, right? Non-SBA loans, you can ask for a deferment on those loans. So now, you have a way of actually augmenting your cash flow. And believe me, it helps. Next slide, please. So, the debt relief. And that's what this comes under, what I just went over, is the debt relief. Because there's still not enough people that know that they can approach their bank and ask for this relief. The OCC, the FDIC, the National Credit Union Association of all told their member institutions to offer, or I should say, actually honor the request to um, actually defer the loans if asked. And here's what's important. It will not affect your credit score. These, I'll say it again, these deferments will not affect your credit scores. And for the lenders, the bank regulators will not look upon them um, as not fulfilling their obligation, which is important. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so now, the vaulted PPP. 
I'm going to be frank with you. You know, the deadline is June 30, but if you went to the bank today, they're going to say Sarnar. Why? Because they still have a backlog of applications to still get processed. Most of the local banks are not um, accepting applications. Now, there is one in the city that I know of right now that is, and that's City First Bank. But you can go to City First Bank, you can go online to Cabbage, you can go online to OnDeck, you can go online to PayPal and some of the others and get that PPP loan. But you, right after this presentation, you better rush out and do it. <laughs> yeah. okay. So that you can still yep. get the money. That's right. Yeah. There's still $100 billion left in the PPP program. $100 billion, okay, is still left. So go get the money. Now, the SBA is providing 100% loan guarantee to the lenders to, you know, do this program. And there are no fees charged for the PPP program. So make sure you're going to Carl and his team to assist you if you need help. Okay. Now it is only a one page application, but I don't want to hear about people paying $85 in fees for help with a one page application. That's just crazy. All right. And as we all know, the loans are processed through a participating bank unlike idle. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so let's go over the parameters. We do know that the loan amount is still up to $10 million. The interest rate, I still can't believe it, it's just 1%. There are no <laughs> loan fees, okay? No collateral, can you imagine? No collateral for a commercial loan and no personal guarantees. And guess what? Your credit report isn't pulled for the PPP loan. No credit report is pulled, okay? You don't have to make a payment on this loan for 12 months. And if you wanna pay early, there's no prepayment penalty. I mean, what's there not to like about this? So small businesses, nonprofits, veteran organizations, tribal concerns that have 500 or fewer employees and or are within the SBA size standards are eligible for this loan. Next slide, please. So we know, right, what the rules are. Now, under the Flexibility Act that Donald Trump signed into law on June 5th, 2020, 60% of the money can be used toward payroll, okay? And the other 40% is used toward lease rent payments, interest on a commercial mortgage, transportation. Now, what I mean by that is the fuel that you put in your car or Jeep that's used for business purposes your business telephone, and your internet, and of course, gas, electric, and water. So 40% of the PPP money can be used for those items. Now, as of June 5th, with the Flexibility Act, you have until December 31st to actually get those employees hired back and those funds dispersed. And then after those 24 weeks, then you're gonna ask for forgiveness, okay? Now, partial forgiveness will be granted if 60% is spent or more is spent on payroll costs beyond the covered period. But you want 100% loan forgiveness. So just go ahead. Either you're going to use 100% for payroll or you can use the 60-40 rule. 60% for payroll, 40% for operating expenses. And here's my editorial. So now that we have phase one and phase two, and soon we're gonna have phase three, right? So now you should be able to generate some revenue to assist you in offsetting some of your operating costs. So this PPP money, if you were to receive it today, actually would be a big help to your um, operation. All right, next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk about the IDLE, which was actually the first loan program that was rolled mm -hmm. out back in March. Yeah. I, I had a question about the previous slide. Yep. Um, hi, I'm Raja. Uh, I, uh, I, ha I got a PPP loan, and I was just wondering if you're saying that the 60-40 rule applies to 60% of your payroll and 40% of these other types of expenses, but it still will be 100% covered if, if, if it hits, fits that ratio, right? So, like, let's just you take, let's say you get a $100 loan, 
and you use $60 of that on payroll and $40 on other expenses, the SBA is still going to guarantee and uh, sorry, reimburse the full hundred dollars, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the, that's the rule. Okay. And, but they haven't started dispersing any of those payments yet, have they? Well, we haven't gotten into the forgiveness period. Okay. Well, and that starts when? Well, it depends, right? So if you received it after June 5th, then you got to 24 weeks. If prior to that, then you got eight weeks, right? So you have the eight weeks, then you're going to apply for the forgiveness. But does that, does that apply to, so I got it before June 5th. So I have eight weeks, but does, does the period that they're going to cover uh, extend eight, all the way till December? Weeks. It's eight weeks from the disbursement of the loan. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. Thank you. And, and let me say this, for those people, let's just say after June 5th, that got the PPP, I would not wait until December 31st to try to get forgiveness because everybody is going to be trying to do that. Your bank's going to be overwhelmed, right, with requests. And, you know, mistakes are liable to happen because of the crush of requests. So if you fired up you've hired up your employees you've used the money okay then go ahead and apply for the forgiveness and they have 60 days your bank has 60 days to look it over and then they'll send it over to the SBA the SBA I think and I have to look at the latest interim ruling at one time it was 30 days the SBA had 30 days to get back to the bank for some reason, I'm thinking that changed to 60 days itself. But we'll stick with the 30 days because I do remember that off the top of my head. And, and then the SBA will tell the bank, yes, this loan is forgiven. And then from your standpoint, the customer, you're you know having a big sigh of relief, okay? Because the whole idea is not to have a loan. So as long as you use it within the parameters that you're supposed to use it in, then you should be fine. Let me re let me say this though, because I'm getting a lot of requests. Well, can I use some of the money toward marketing? Can I use it toward business development? Can I use it toward buying a building? No. Stick within the parameters of what the money is supposed to be used for. Okay, you have to do that. Please do that. I think Thanks, we've already seen, we've seen the articles online and in the Washington Post and in the Wall Street Journal where people have inappropriately used the money and they're getting locked up, okay? Oh, so, yeah, yeah, I read an article uh, yesterday on that. Unbelievable, unbelievable. All right. But, hey, so, uh, Rod, we got a question. Yeah. Uh, um, Mr. Uh, Colin wanted to know what bank uh, is accepting uh, PPP in D.C.? All right, run on down to City First on U Street. Okay, ask for Gloria Norton, N-A-U-D-E-N, or you can call in. But I go on down there because they're still accepting applications. But tell them about the uh, Fentex also. Okay, so you have cabbage. You can sit in your living room or man cave or the kitchen, and you have cabbage on deck, PayPal, Intuit. Now, they're actually doing these things within four days. Okay, so I would go ahead after we get off this presentation, if you haven't applied, go ahead and apply, okay, and get the money. Now, there's other money out there. So the idle portal has been reopened now, I think for two weeks, okay? This was the original program that was funded with about $50 billion. I don't know if you guys remember back in March, you know, President Trump did his address to the nation saying, I'm going to ask Congress for 50 billion to help small businesses. Well, this was the program that was originally rolled out was the idle program. Okay. And at one time, the loan amount could be up to $2 million. But let me say this, there were 5.8 million applications for this program. 5.8 million applications from across the country and it just crushed the human resources of the SBA. 
And so we had to shut this thing down for a month to try to catch up. The other thing is we had to lower the loan amount because the SBA decided that they wanted to, to distribute as much money as possible to different entities across the United States. So now the most you can get is $150,000. The interest rate is at 3.75 for for-profit and 2.75 for nonprofit, which for nonprofits, that's an excellent rate. Now, unlike the PPP, they're not telling you that you have to use 60% for payroll and 40% for you know, other costs, okay? So you can use the funds to pay rent, the interest on the mortgage, utilities, which I've defined, and accounts payables. Now you have a 30 year payback. Now that's unheard of because typically you don't get 30 years to pay back a commercial loan. There are no fees. The collateral, if it's 20, under 25,000, there's no collateral or personal guarantees. If it's 25,000 and above, there's typically going to be a lien on the business um, asset. Now, the FICO score, it really shouldn't be, be below 600. I've heard that they'll even go as low as 570, but really it shouldn't be below 600, okay? Otherwise, you will get turned down. Um, the first payment is not due for 12 months, and there's no prepayment, prepayment penalty. So let's review. You have an existing 7A504 microloan. You get a deferment for up to six months. You have a non-SBA loan, line of credit, term loan, commercial mortgage. You get a deferment for six months. You have the PPP. Now you get up to um, 12 months before you had to make a payment on the PPP under the Flexibility Act. Then on the idle, you don't have to make a payment for 12 months. I'm, I'm seeing cash flow all over the place, okay? Because either six months or it's a year that you don't have to make payments on a loan, okay? So when you have that and you couple it with now you're reopening and now you're generating revenue, and so that revenue can now help offset some of your operating expenses. And then you don't have to make a payment on loans for six months to a year. Um, I think that's a very good deal. It really is. All right, next slide, please. Uh, Brock, can you also talk about how they can uh, request increase of the uh, approved loan amount? How they can request? Increase of the approved amount for the idle well uh, all right so well you know like i said it's only going up to 150,000. but what you'd have to do is now submit your 2017 18 19 business tax returns and your 531 2020 business tax returns for them to look at seeing if you can get an increase, okay? So now you're almost looking like you have to submit a full package in order for them to do that. But you can do that, and they have an address for reconsideration that you can send the package into, and they'll, they'll look at it again. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention is under IDLE, there's also an advanced slash grant component to this, but it's for your full-time, and part-time equivalent. So they had to be W-2s, not 1099s. They had to be W-2s. And you can get $1,000 for each employee up to $10,000. And you'll get this whether or not you're approved for the EIDL loan or not. So it really just behooves you to apply. And even if you're a single member LLC, a sole proprietor, or 1099 miscellaneous person, apply for idle and get the one thousand dollar you know advance grant right off the bat okay which is different from you know ppp because ppp you got to have the documentation to show that you deserve to have the loan forgiven with idle you just apply and that's it okay you get a thousand dollars off the bat or if you have 10 employees 
you get $10,000 and it's a grant. You don't have to do anything for it, but apply. Okay. Just so a quick next question, slide. Sir? Go ahead. Um, so Any question. I, uh, hello? Yes. Okay. So I did apply for the idol and I got the, the loan, but I did not get a separate grant deposit, even though I did check that box that I wanted the grant. So was it something that would take a while for the grant money to come in or? Actually, you know, that's unusual because usually, usually you get the grant money before you get the loan money. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what I would do, they should have given you an 800 number. And there should be also an email address and the documentation you receive. Just call or email them, give, in, give them your reference number and just say, look, I'm checking on the status of my, you know, advance. Because you should have received that first. But also okay. do this. Um, because I had a buddy of mine, he applied on Saturday. Now he has a habit of checking his business checking account every day. And the money was just there. It just popped into his account on Tuesday, this past Tuesday morning. And he said he hadn't received any, any notice from him. The money was just in the account. So okay, also, do so yeah. also do that. Okay. Um, another question. Is there another question? Oh, I yeah. was going to just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Finish up, please. Okay. The other thing is that the idle loan does not have any kind of forgiveness attached to it, right? No, there's no forgiveness. It's a 30-year term. But okay. you don't Go make ahead, a payment sorry. for the first 12 months. Okay. Sorry, I'm done. Yeah, there's, um, no for, there's no forgiveness to the idle. You just apply, right? And you get an advance or, or grant immediately just for applying whether or not you get approved for the idle loan or not i like that feature because you don't have to prove anything uh colin you had a question yeah well first of all thanks to carl and roderick for putting this together um i i'm i'm an artist so uh i hope i'm not getting confused here um I, I, maybe i am getting maybe i am getting confused because i and um, I got a, I got a federal disaster relief assistance, and I'm, I'm thinking I'm getting it confused with the idol now because I, I I believe that there was a a forgiveness aspect to it, but now now I'm getting confused because I thought I had. Uh, I can, well, okay, well let let um I I can understand that, but if you, uh, Rod, when he's talking federal disaster, that is the idol. Well. It, it depends because remember the money's coming out of the office of disaster assistance. Mm -hmm. So did you have a, were you involved in a flood, a fire, a hurricane? No, this was, this was, be, this was because of the, uh, the, the COVID thing. And okay. uh, my understanding, which could be very wrong. I thought that, that this was that, uh, that the advance is forgivable. But I, not I said that. I right. said that. Right. The advance is a grant. Again, I'm a, I'm a, I'm sorry. I'm 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 a I'm an artist and I'm not very good with finances. So just bear with me. I'll I'll get my question out. So I get a little confused with this stuff. So uh, you know, I, I had a little over ten thousand dollars that was dropped into my account, and which is awesome. I'm uh, you know really small business. It's just. I'm an LLC uh, sole owner and I have a part-time employee that's a 1099 and my understanding was that I was able to use that money towards payroll and you and utilities more or less and um and that I'd get forgiven if I if if it went towards those things and the only real question I have hopefully I'm in the in, uh, kind of understanding this is uh can it go to my 1099 employee or does it have to be towards a regular like full-time employee, which would mean that I guess I, can I pay myself? All right, so you're all confused. We'll take this offline. We'll take this one offline. So okay. let me get through the rest of the program. Yeah, you, okay, you sorry, wanted, sorry. Rob, you want to give them a way to get in touch with you, your email address? Yes, um, roderick.johnson at sba.gov. Now I will say, well, if you've looked at, if you've been looking at the slides, I mean, I think they're pretty good in explaining 
how the funds are supposed to be used for PPP and for idle. And I've explained how the advanced slash grant works under idle, but we can still have a, you know, you can still reach out to me at roderick.johnson at sba.gov because I want to make sure that you really understand what you have. Okay, thank you, Roderick. Yep, I want to make sure you understand. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Devin, you had a question, last question. Okay, real quick. Um, in a similar sense, I have uh, I received the uh, the the, uh, the idol as well, and in the process of getting the idol, I had to use a credit card to, to pay for some equipment. Um, am I able to use the idol money to, as part of the accounts payable? Is that considered to to pay off the purchase on the credit card, or would I have to go directly to the the purchaser uh, next time? Or how, how can I use it for that? I want to make sure I'm not using it inappropriately. All right, so here's the key question with the credit card. Is it a business credit card? Yes. Ah, okay, then we're good. Yes. No. You can. Okay. Great. I have one question with that. Um, my name is Dwayne Gray's of the Alpha Graphics, and um, I began with a personal credit card paying my, you know, my vendors and, and so forth, and my accountant said, I can pay those personal credit cards as long as I create a, um, like, you know, you go to a corporation, you go out and you, you're on, you're on uh, travel and you use your personal credit card and you, then you have to submit a, um, a voucher, you know, you have to submit a receipts for, for your business travel and, and expenses. And um, he said, then you can use the business revenue to pay those expenses. Here's, all right, so go back and, and ask your accountant this, because here's what I would do. I'd write a check to myself, okay? I would write a check to myself out of my business account and put, you know, payroll, okay? And then, use that money to pay those expenses. Now, are you a, are you a sole proprietor or single member LLC? Or a corporation, C-Corp. Are you a C-Corp? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was gonna be dicey, okay? It really is. He said I'm, that all, your, all, all you would have to do is every month, write, um, put together a um, expense report. I understand. Of what you use personally on your personal credit card and have the corporation pay that back. Corporations do it all the time. And I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm think, I'm, as you're talking about that, I'm thinking through it. As you did say you're a C Corp. Correct. Okay. So, yeah, then, then yeah, then you're okay. But you really should have a business credit card if you don't have one. Yeah, now I do, but again, these are been in business six years, so you know, we have um, a if questioned. I just need to know. Yeah, you know, basically, I get him. I mean, I, I get what he's doing. Yeah, you're you're just reimbursing. I got you. Right. Yeah, that's fine. And as so, long as you have the detail behind it, then then you should be fine. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. I just had to think through that a moment. Yeah. Okay. And okay. You should be fine. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right, Rod, you want to go next slide? Yeah. I like these questions, by the way, guys. Okay, so let me Good be clear question. about that. Good question. And that's what um, we want to we want to provide the information that is personal to you, but we still want to get through these slides for everybody. So remember what I said about the advance, right? Up to ten thousand dollars. $1,000 per individual, either full-time or part-time. That's in 99s now. They got to be W-2. Let me be very clear. They got to be W-2s, not 1099s. All right? So you'll get 1000 per employee. And see what it says? Borrowers do not have to repay the advance, even if their application for an idle is denied. Okay? 
So that's why I was saying earlier, all you need to do is apply. You don't have to provide any documentation or anything. It's just applying. And if it's just you as a single member LLC or sole proprietor, you get $1,000 just for applying, okay? And then if you have up to 10 employees, then you'll get $10,000. So you'll see that you can apply at covid19relief.sba.gov for both the idle loan and the idle advance. So to me, even if there are not banks that are processing, because I'll tell you the majority of the banks have stopped processing except City First. The fine tax is still processing. But I would still apply to IDLE because you can have an IDLE loan and a PPP loan at the same time, okay? It's just that with the PPP, you just have to have great documentation to show why the loan should be forgivable. But again, as long as you use the money within the parameters of what the program says for PPP, then you should have 100% forgiveness, okay? All right, next slide, please. I think we're coming up on, yeah. Now, this just came out in the interim ruling about three days ago. I have to have it here, but this is what I will say, is that they're talking about idle loans before January 31st, 2020, or after April 3rd, 2020. Now remember, we didn't even know about COVID-19 prior to January 31st, 2020. So I think what they're talking about here are actually the loans for floods, fire, and hurricanes. You can't use the PPP money if you've gotten a disaster loan for those three things, whether it's prior to January 31st or after April 3rd of this year. We're waiting for language to come out from the Department of Treasury to, to really hone in and narrow down that language that I just gave you, okay? So don't let this alarm you because typically you can get a PPP loan pay off the idle loan if you've used it for those other expenses, then it becomes one loan. And as long as you use the money, 40% for utility, 60% for payroll, then it'll be 100% forgiven, okay? So that rule still applies. All right, next slide, please. And so now we should be coming up with the SBA Express Bridge Loan that's been resurrected from the dead, you know, um, all right, so next slide. What the SBA Express loan does is, with minimal paperwork, you can get a $25,000 bridge loan until your idle loan comes through for you. And what you're doing is you're gonna use the idle loan proceeds basically to pay off the SBA Express. Now this is another tool, but typically what I recommend is just go ahead and apply for idle, okay? And get your, and go ahead and get your advance and then they'll approve you for the loan, and then that's just one less thing you have to worry about. But if you need $25,000, you're pressed for that $25,000, and you needed it yesterday, then, then go ahead and apply for the SB Express Bridge Loans. Those loans are actually being done by Industrial, City First, Congressional Bank, all in D.C. Um, they're being done by those banks, okay? just to give you, or you can go out to the sba.gov website and do the lender match. And they, you put in your information and those banks will find you to do the SBA Express. All right, next slide. Now you have loan application support for IDLE. Now here's the telephone number for IDLE. If you wanna get the increase or you have a question, let's just say that you got your loan but you didn't get your advance or grant, then you would hit the um, customer service line and it should be an address. Here it is. The email address is disaster customer service at sba.gov. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, here's where Carl and his guys come in. Do not be paying anyone mm -hmm. to help you apply for That's any right. of these loans. That's right. That's why you have Carl. It's our tax dollars at work that pay for Carl and his staff score, 
the people at the women business centers and oh by the way you don't have to be a female to use the women's business center right. and you don't have to be a veteran to use the veterans business outreach center but you have four outlets that you can use that's free so please do not be paying twenty five hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars eighty five hundred dollars to apply for these loans when you have carl and his team right here in dc to assist you okay and you have relationships with all the banks too so, so yes and see I, I yesterday when i did uh, another zoom you know a lady told me that she paid twenty five hundred dollars in total for the guy to help her pull her information together and then to actually fill out the application for her okay <laughs> okay all right well this is why i'm saying you have free resources free. okay that you can use yeah. to help you do those things okay <laughs> all right next slide please all right so <laughs> let me give you i want to give some quick stats all right so we got a hundred billion dollars left there were 4.5 million applications processed jp morgan chase bank of america and wells fargo were the top lenders you know processing these ppp loans washington dc received 2.1 billion dollars where 11,000 applications were processed, okay? So NDC, $2.1 billion for PPP. So the money's flowing out there. The IDLE program still has about $60 billion left. PPP has $100 billion left, okay? And so there's money out there for you to go grab as soon as you get off the phone. I mean, excuse me, as soon as you get off this, this presentation. Yep. And you can go and get money. I got we got one last question too, uh, Rod. Uh, young lady wants to know what fixed debts are. Fixed debts, and you know when you talked about the uh, PPP, what the fixed debts were that uh, you could use the money for. I guess. Yeah, typically, well, the biggest one, right, is going to be your lease rent expense. That's a fixed debt, right? Then if you're having to pay for electric water, gas, that's a fixed expense. I know that you're paying for a business telephone every month, whether that's your cell phone or you have a landline somewhere, that's a fixed expense. You're paying for the internet every month, that's, that's right. a fixed expense, okay? Right. All of those are fixed expenses. If you're using a car, even if it's your car and you're using it for business purposes and you're putting gas in it, and you're making a trip for business purposes, that's a fixed expense, okay? So, and that comes falls under that 40% of the PPP money being used. Now, let me say this, you know, you can use 100% of the PPP money for payroll, if that's what you wanna do, mm -hmm. you can do that. It still falls within the parameters of being 100% forgivable. So please don't sleep on that. You don't have to use it, okay, for that 40%. And if you think about it this way, since we're reopening in phase one, two, and three, and you're generating revenue for your company anyway, that revenue may be able to, to um, offset your operating expenses. And so therefore you can use the PPP money to pay yourself 100%, okay? so. Think about that. It doesn't have to be the 60-40 split. And, that, and, and would you say pay yourself up to $100,000? Yes, yes. Yes. With, with that question, uh, there's an add-on. Now, when you have to repay your PPP, does it have to be within a certain time frame? Because I was told that you have to, you have to pay the PPP to the uh, payroll levels prior to the epidemic yes you now when I was making that statement just now I'm really gearing that toward the single member LLC the 1099 and the sole proprietors because they're the ones that actually get caught up in that right 
So that's really where that statement was geared for. But yes, to, to what you're saying, that is absolutely true. And remember, it's not name specific, it's body specific. So right. if you have an employee that resigns, then, you know, okay, then you can go replace that employee with someone else. If you have an issue where the employee says, well, you know what, I don't want to come back because I'm afraid that, you know, I may catch the coronavirus or frankly, I'm making more in unemployment than you pay me. Okay. Your wages are horrible. Then I'm going, I'm going to still collect unemployment. Well, as long as you've made a good faith effort in writing, okay, this is where the documentation comes in. As long as you have that documentation to show that you've offered the job for the employee to come back, then you won't be penalized. Okay. Now, we were shut down for two months by legislative requirements. And I received the PPP back in at the end of April. And we weren't able to use it. Well, yeah, you could have been using it. Yeah, you were. Well, no, we, we were shut down. So I could have paid well, our... It doesn't matter. Because remember, the intent of the PPP program was to keep your people on payroll to keep them off of the unemployment line. So basically pay them for doing nothing. Exactly. That was what was getting under the craw of a lot of um, restaurants and hotels. They're like, okay, I have this money, but I'm not open. And the answer was, yeah, we know that, but that's the whole idea of the PPP. That was the whole idea why it came into existence was for you to pay those people even if they're sitting at home eating bonbons, right? Because they didn't want them on the unemployment line. So two and a half months from the date of disbursement. Yes. Now what some people were doing um, was giving some of the money back. But here's a little thing that you could do, okay? So let's just say that you have not used all the money, okay? But what you may do is, you may say, you know what, Susie and Sally, or Johnny or Joaquin, look, you taking a chance coming back to work, let me give you a little bonus for coming back to work and, you know, doing your job. Let me give you a little bonus. It's acceptable under PPP that you can do that. Okay. Hmm. And technically, the, they're using the PPP money for salaries. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That okay. was really the that was really the the whole purpose of the program is to let's keep, keep people under off the unemployment line. Now, <laughs> what? Now let's let's face it. So. Under when Congress passed, I guess, the three trillion dollar package, and then they said, Well, you know what, we're gonna give people an extra six hundred dollars a week, okay, for unemployment. And now you're looking at a thousand dollars a week. Well, you know, employees began to say, Well, hmm, <laughs> why do I need to come back? Uh, you know, I'm making more money. But what they forget is, and as an employer, what you, you can remember is unemployment says you have to be looking for work gainfully every week, okay? So if they turn your job down, then their unemployment benefits stop. Right, they dry up. Okay. So see, it's, it's all in just kind of knowing the nuances of the rules, okay? You, they, as the, you as the owner and how to use that money. And like I said, I, I just gave you something, right? Hey, Joaquin, come on back. And since you, you the owner, haven't like used up all the money per se in eight weeks, I'll give old Joaquin a little bonus. Could be, you know, $250, okay? To come back. Wow. Yeah, well, look. Rod, we can go on forever, but we ain't got all that time. 
Okay. So I want to I want to thank you again, and if things change again, we'll have you back on. I want to thank everybody for participating today. I hope we answered your questions, but you can always send Rod an email, and he'll respond back to you with the information. And you can always sign up for services at DC, SBDC.org, and we got counselors that would help you with your loan program and everything else. So check us out, DC, SBDC.org. And uh, Rod, once again, we appreciate the partnership we have with the SBA. And, you know, we love working with you guys, and you're always available to us. And we appreciate all of that. So, yeah, thank, thank you. you. This has been fun. I thoroughly enjoy working with you guys. This has been fun for me. All right. Everybody have a great weekend. All, all right. right.